In the European Union, every year, over 60,000 million euros are wasted on research and development of products and technologies that are already protected by patent law. That's the combined GDP of Croatia and Albania, the combined yearly revenues of Microsoft and Apple, or the equivalent of 50 large high-tech hospitals. What a waste of money! Four million patents are in force worldwide. 800,000 inventions are registered every year. In Europe, there were 178,000 patent applications in 2002. The volume of patent data is overwhelming. It's a maze. Some stories in the field of intellectual property are thrillers. Some even say there is a war going on. The IP war. In the year 2005, the European Parliament votes against software patents. In the same year, Apple makes $250 million with its MP3 player iPod, based on a technology invented by the German Fraunhofer Institute. Patent holders of MP3 are Thomson and the Fraunhofer Institute. But Audio MPEG and its parent company Syswell announced that it has filed suit against Thomson and Fraunhofer asking for the invalidity of these patents. In the same year, Apple files a patent for the user interface of the iPod. But Apple's competitor Microsoft has already patented this technology. In the same year, the US Patent Office confirms the legacy of Aeola's patent on Microsoft browser plugins. This could change the web as we know it forever. Yes, there is a war going on. And the battlefield is intellectual property. When did this all begin? The first patent law was a Venetian statute of 1474. England followed with the statute of monopolies in 1623 under King James I. Prior to this time, the Crown would issue letters patent providing any person with a monopoly to produce particular goods or provide particular services. The first of them, granted by Henry VI in 1449 to a Flemish man, was a 20-year monopoly on the manufacture of stained glass. This became increasingly open to abuse, as the Crown granted patents in respect of all sorts of known goods, even salt, for example. After public outcry, James I was forced to revoke all existing monopolies and declare that they were only to be used for projects of new invention. The US Patent Commission was created in 1790. A country without a patent office and good patent laws is just a crab and can't travel anyways but sideways and backwards, said Mark Twain. One of the first members of the U.S. Patent Commission was Secretary of State Thomas Jefferson. Korikio Takahashi, first president of the Japanese Patent Office, said, We looked about us to see which nations are the greatest, so that we can be like them. We said, What is it that makes the United States such a great nation? And we investigated and found that it was patents. And so we will have patents. Established by the Convention on the Grant of European Patents, EPC, signed in Munich in 1973, the EPO is the outcome of the European country's collective political determination to establish a uniform patent system in Europe. Patent data is public. Current search tools are inconvenient and inadequate to the needs of professionals. The few dominant players on the market struggle to maintain their services under the workload. Nowadays, researchers need integrated views of correlated information, corporate affiliations, scientific information, prior art documents, news on intellectual property, and more. This function is not offered by any competitor to this day. Matrixware fills the gap. In vast laboratories in Europe, the USA and Japan, physicists are now experimenting with magnetic fields tens of thousands of times greater than that of the Earth.
Every thing around us is magnetic. It's basic property of the whole matter of the whole universe. If we use strong enough magnetic fields, we can levitate basically anything. Plastic, water, strawberries, spiders, frogs, name it. In vast laboratories in Europe, the USA and Japan, physicists are now experimenting with magnetic fields tens of thousands of times greater than that of the Earth. And all this energy goes into creating a magnetic field in an area just two inches across. When subjected to magnetic forces of this scale, it's not just metals like iron which are affected. Almost any material can be magnetized. We have liftoff. And when magnetized, it floats. Magnetic levitation strikes one's fancy. It's a fun thing to do, and uh, there's a lot of surprises. But just as the inventor of magnetic levitation, Eric Lathwaite, should have been enjoying the fruits of his success, he took a turn in his career, which was to destroy his reputation. It was the possibility of a completely different means of levitation which now captured his attention. It would preoccupy him for the rest of his life. His findings would lead him deep into controversy and put fellow scientists in a spin.